So today, while the wind is blowing like mad outside, we're going to have a long overdue chat about our self-steering system, but more specifically about our wind vane and our BNG autopilot. As you guys probably know, we have both systems on board, the mechanical wind vane off the back and our push button hydraulic autopilot ram underneath the cockpit locker. And we've received tons and tons of comments asking which we like better, how we use them over the past couple of years. So today we're gonna dive into all of it. So six years ago when we bought our boat, it came with an autopilot system. It was a Raymarine wheel pilot, which meant there was a, a belt drive on our actual helm and a very tiny little motor that would steer the boat. Um, we nicknamed it Squeaky. <laughs> But as we found out, once we put our boat in the water and we actually started sailing it, that system did not work very well at all. It was severely underpowered for our boat. Every little gust or puff of wind and it would skip and the belt would slip. Mm -hmm. um, we had to sail very, very underpowered, uh, especially at night, but that wasn't the worst of it. It also randomly decided to go into standby mode. It either in 10 seconds or in 10 minutes or in 10 hours. So it was very, very unreliable happening in here all right unfortunately autopilot doesn't want to keep up it keeps going to start up or standby and uh, we found ourselves hand steering most of the time because it was better than sort of lying there with one eye open yeah. you know waiting for the autopilot to stop working because it would stop working silently and you wouldn't know until your sails started flogging and you look up you're like god oh, it's on standby again <laughs> Yeah, you would be, we would be like reading a book or something and then suddenly we just hear the sail flap and then the boat is starting to Round go up when Like what is going on? And yeah, the autopilot went to sleep. Yeah, it just <laughs> decided to take a nap. So lots of issues we had with that thing. We broke a belt at some point. But the good part was uh, we were sailing to windward into the Caribbean and our boat balances very well to windward. So a lot of times we would just sort of lock the helm off and the boat would sail for three or four minutes. You just kind of adjust it a little bit mm -hmm. and it would fall off. And um, we got very, very good at hand steering and learning how to balance our boat for the whole first year and a half, almost two years, I think. Yeah. That being said, when it comes to sailing, we believe that our, the number one safety priority is being well rested mm -hmm. because on a short-handed sailboat like the one we have it can be very exhausting to be hand steering 24 7 for days on end and we all know that the worst mistakes happen when someone's tired mm -hmm. so we sailed around the caribbean without an autopilot and that was probably fine because we knew that most passages were very short mm -hmm. but when we made it to curacao with the plans of having longer crossings longer passages the first one being 900 nautical miles over to guatemala we knew that there were some adjustments and some improvements to be made. So the first thing we did when we made it to Curacao was investing in a wind vane. So there are a lot of different types of mechanical self-steering devices out there. For short, we all pretty much refer to them as wind vanes. And we have spoken to quite a few people who have them installed different versions on their boat. Wow, we are like <laughs> healed over. We're healing the over at the top. We're like <laughs> this far healed over right now. <laughs> It's like the Starburst yeah. commercial. <laughs> anyway. We're start doing this video sideways. Um, there are a lot of different types of wind vanes out there. Some work better than others, some are more complicated than others, and some are more expensive than others. So if you're interested in a wind vane, the one that you choose for your own boat, you should do your own research and talk to people who have different versions installed. The wind vane that we chose to install is called a Cape Horn. They're made by a company in Quebec, Canada. And the simplicity and the ease of operation and just how well they work made the decision to install one on our boat super, super easy. Back when we installed our wind vane in Curacao, we put out two different videos highlighting the install and going into a lot more detail about the specifics of our wind vane. So if you want to learn more about it, we'll link those here, no, I where you can get them. Here or down here. So to wrap it up, we did the first half of the Caribbean without an autopilot. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> we did the second half with the wind vane and we finished the circumnavigation of the Caribbean, made it back to Florida as we were ready to upgrade all of our electronics, including installing a BNG 
hydraulic autopilot system. And just like the wind vane, we do have other videos showing the install of our BNG system. So if you're interested in that, definitely check the description below. We'll leave the link to the videos and also the link to the BNG site that I believe lists all the electronics that we have with them. Uh, the fender's like right here. It's like, Aah. The wind picked up when I started talking and it died when I stopped. It's like, shh, 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 shh. Yeah. This isn't some studio. If you hear squeaking and winding and halyards banging, that's why. We're waiting for wind and uh, yeah. you can too. Ba -da -ba -ba. Hey. All right, let's start with the hydraulic autopilot system that we have on board. It's integrated and networked into our entire BNG system. So it gets data from the compass and water speed and wind speed and wind angle. And we can set waypoints on the chart plotter and it will steer our boat towards them. So the whole system is very well networked and integrated together. And with a simple push of a button at the helm, it engages and the boat steering itself, which we absolutely love. We find ourselves using it the most when we're on an approach to a marina or a harbor and we're like dropping the sails or if we're trying to navigate some very narrow cuts and we know it's gonna steer a perfectly straight line or steer exactly to a waypoint that we set. And because it's just the two of us sailing the boat, having that sort of third crew member to take over the helm um, is amazing, especially because we film mm -hmm. everything. So we actually end up using our hydraulic system a lot because we film stuff and you need to hit auto so one of us can hold a camera while the other one's doing something. Or <laughs> or we click it on when one of us needs to catch the drone and the yes. other one needs to fly the drone into the boat. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of use cases for our hydraulic system that might not be um, normal for a typical cruising boat, but with just the two of us on board, it's so nice to have a third mm -hmm. crew member that we can just immediately hand the, hand the helm over to and it just takes over and keeps the boat on course while we're off doing something else. Yeah, it does have a few cons and one of which is the fact that it's a very complex system. Mm -hmm. And the second one is that it does use, even though if it's efficient, it does use some power. Yeah, I think that's probably its biggest con is, is, is the fact that there's digital circuit boards and hydraulic oil and and um, bearings to grease and yeah there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that can go wrong that will mess it up um, and like Kika said it does consume power now it doesn't consume very much power in fact it's been difficult for us to even measure how much power it consumes because every time we go out sailing the conditions are different which means the autopilot's on such a varying amount that it's actually difficult to sort of tell you how much power it consumes because mm -hmm. it varies so much. Our boat balances pretty well and we don't normally use the hydraulic autopilot in big, heavy, sloppy offshore conditions. So overall, I would say in a 24 hour sail, it might use 500 watt hours, maybe. Um, if it's kind of heavy or the boat's a bit unbalanced or the sea's kind of sloppy, I would say I would say at most it would use one kilowatt hour in 24 hours. It's very, very efficient. It's not something that we worry about, like, oh, we have to shut the autopilot off because our batteries are low. Yeah. Um, it's it's not something that we worry about. So I mean, it's not just the fact that it consumes power too, mm -hmm. it's the fact that it is an electronic system attached yeah. to the boat. So if something happens and all of our electronics blow out, like our you know, batteries like die or, yeah, something yeah. like that, then the autopilot won't work, right? Yeah. Which is why it's good that we also have the wind vane Absolutely. that is all mechanical and doesn't use any power which segue to the wind in cape horn now <laughs> cape oh yeah norway horn cape not porn. cape horn <laughs> <laughs> okay so one of our favorite quotes goes something like this a good designer knows he has achieved perfection not when there's nothing left to add but when there's nothing left to take away and the cape horn wind vane is a perfect example of exactly that it's clean, it's simple, it's minimalistic, it's well designed, it's custom fit for every single boat that it's uh, installed on, which makes it very personalized to your own boat. I think pretty much every other wind vane out there is one size fits all. Yeah. And so you're kind of buying an average um, that works okay on every boat rather than a specific one that works really well on each boat that it's put on. Like the brackets on all of them you adjust so it fits on your boat, but it's the same wind vane and it's the same pendulum for every boat that you put it on. 
other wind vanes just seem complicated. They're big. They're kind Bulky. of ugly. They're, yeah. they're a lot of extra parts <laughs> hanging off the back here. Yeah, there's a lot of points of failures out. But just the fact that it's beautiful <laughs> isn't the only uh, no. pro of the wind vane. It's, it also has to work. <laughs> it also works like a charm. Yeah. Like if the boat is balanced at all, it steers like amazingly. And I think it steers Very better cool. than we do actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> sometimes we are sometimes we're out on the cockpit looking at the wind vane working and we're wondering how does it know what to do? We can feel Uma start to come up a wave or you can feel a puff of wind and you look back and like the wind vane's already over where it's supposed to be and the helm's already where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And we're like, how did it know there was a gust coming? Like it's so weird that it it like it's smarter than our BNG system in some ways. And I think this is a big re this is one of the reasons why we personally rather use a Cape Horn when we're offshore yeah. than the uh, hydraulic system. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, we know that like the stronger the winds, the heavier the seas, the stronger the wind vane gets. Yeah, 37 knot gusts, which is exactly what we're getting. 36, 34, 35. On a sail like crossing the North Atlantic, we've only used the Cape Horn system yeah. because <laughs> it was offshore. We're not yeah. close to land. It doesn't matter if we veer off a few degrees yeah. and snake our way in. But we are sailing a big S, you know, across the ocean, um, which when you're offshore, it doesn't really matter uh, if you're in a fjord or you're in a shipping lane or you're somewhere where mm -hmm. precise um, sailing needs to happen. Not so good. Or where the wind is shifting a lot. Um, I think that's probably one of the cons of the Cape Horn would be uh, if the wind gusts probably mm -hmm. more than like five to ten knots. I would say like if the winds if the winds going from fifteen to twenty from the same direction, wind vane's going to be awesome. If the winds going from ten to twenty or ten to twenty five, the boat's going to be all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely um, needs some consistent wind for it to be yeah, very accurate. Which is why it works so well offshore because the wind just stays the same. You might have increases and decreases, but like here in Norway around the fjords, we go from we go from 5 knots to 30 knots all the time. And the wind angle sh and the wind shifts, angle shifts all the time too. So, we're normally using our hydraulic autopilot and uh, switching between all the different modes, either mm -hmm. heading mode where it just points you at the same compass heading, wind mode where it keeps the wind at the same angle to the boat, or um, navigation mode where it like it gets us to our waypoint no matter what, and then we're adjusting the sails and reefing and doing all the sail management, but the boat's on course. Yep. Um, so yeah, in the last year we've used a hydraulic pretty much exclusively. I'm not sure we've dropped the Cape Horn in the water once since we made it to Norway. No. I would say the more consistent the sailing condition, the better the Cape Horn does. Um, yeah, consistent waves, consistent wind, consistent sail trim, consistent angle, you know, it, it does phenomenally well. But mm -hmm. as soon as the conditions start to vary a lot, it has a bit harder of a time trying to keep up, which yeah. I mean makes sense because you're trimming your sails all the time too. Exactly. And another one is the fact that it does take time to set up as opposed to the autopilot yeah. when you just push a button and you go. Yeah, it definitely takes a little bit longer to set up, but it, it's, it's not long. From completely stripped, yeah, we put the vein in, drop the pendulum in the water, adjust it, pull the lines up. If everything goes smoother the first time, maybe two minutes if I have to come down below to like actually get the vein and, and bolt it on. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have to like kind of reset it and adjust the, a little bit of weather helm and put it back in. So that is definitely a con. It is, it is more finicky in its adjustment and setup, but once it's good, it's, it's good. It's good. Once it's good, it's good. It's good. Mm. There is one more con with the wind vane um, that is very minor because we only had it happen in the Caribbean, and that is sailing through sargasm. Yeah. That floating true. seaweed, uh, because it's an extra pendulum in the water, and because it's going sort of out to the side of the boat and out to the other side, that sargasso uh, seaweed stuff does get stuck on it, and it will trip the bungee cord because it has a breakaway. So if you hit like a log, it'll just bend the pendulum back, mm -hmm. and it won't actually damage anything. And there's bungee cords, and there's a little tether, so you don't lose it. But yeah, we found ourselves resetting from from Guatemala to Mexico, we were resetting the wind vane like every few hours because there was huge patches of sargasso out there and we'd hit them at night and it was it was actually kind of frustrating. Whereas if we had the hydraulic at that point in time, it, it steers the actual boat rudder, nothing gets stuck on it and we would have been fine. Suddenly got sunny outside. Yeah, Norway. It'll start raining again later. <laughs> it's sunny on the bow and raining on the stern. Yeah. And snowing in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's another 30 knot gust there. 
and, and the top of the mast is 10 knots of wind, and there's 30 knots ripping through the cockpit. Going up. <laughs> Going up. So in our research to find uh, what we consider the best wind vane, we've talked to a lot of people that have different versions of wind vanes installed on their boats, including some people that built their own. And from what we've heard and from what we've found, most boats do well with wind vanes on some points of sail mm -hmm. in some conditions. And the only wind vane that we heard good things about in all points of sail and in all conditions were the Cape Horn. Um, and if, if that makes sense, like some people say like, oh, if we're on like a beam reach in 20 knots, the wind vane works great. But as soon as we're running downwind or like, or it won't work in light wind conditions, or if it's heavy seas, it won't work, or if, if we're pinching, like, like there's always a, there's always like a, it works great, but, um, but everyone that we talked to with a Cape Horn, uh, sung its praises and um we're we're hitching our we're hitching our wagon to that train because we have aside from aside from the two sort of cons that we've mentioned in the video which are which were the, the pendulum can get caught on junk floating in the water and it's a bit finicky to set up like it's not really but it takes longer than just pushing a button I'd say everything else is fantastic about yeah. it we've sailed on all points of sail all wind conditions wing on wing with the spinnaker out it works um so that might upset some people who have other wind vanes that have other experience out there on their own boats, but every boat also sails differently. So that's our experience. And um, that's why we chose the Cape that's Horn. That's why we chose the for Cape our boat. Horn for our boat. <laughs> so after two years of having both, I know we've get a lot of questions asking which one is actually better. Which one should I buy? <laughs> yeah, but the reality is there's not really a winner in that scenario because mm -hmm. they really both complement each other. Where one fails, the other one fills in. Yeah, I think it depends on your sailing area. Mm -hmm. I would say if you're crossing an ocean and you can only choose one, wind vane. All day long, don't even bother with the electronic autopilot. Um, if you're coastal sailing or Bahamas, Caribbean, um, that kind of thing, or you plan on doing a lot of motoring, like you're doing the, like the Great Loop or a lot of canals, then hydraulic yeah. or autopilot would be much better. Um, we're certainly glad that we have both because uh, we do both and we use both and we're glad we have both. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I guess that would be our, our conclusion. Yeah. Yes, so I really hope you enjoyed this video guys and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you found this information useful and uh, Hopefully the wind will die down soon <laughs> so, so that start sailing again. we can go sailing again. So And also make sure you check the video description because we'll have yes. links to all of our install videos and any other useful information down there about our different systems. We'll be linking in the video description. Yep. And with that said, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the news? Should we like awkwardly stack our papers and like oh, <laughs> and, like, oh, oh. <laughs> but it's silent so you can't hear what we're saying.